It is Tuesday, and I'm uh, doing a short stream today. Uh, let's just see here. Get my brain back in gear. It's been a long weekend, so I always forget what I did, what I'm doing. Right? Gotta gotta refresh the mind. And let me just pull up my chat on my phone so that I don't miss things. You know the drill. Okay. Perfect. Right, so I was traveling on the weekend and I had crazy flights and everything, so I'm uh, quite tired today, so I'm not going to be doing a long stream. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is try and come up with some work uh, that I could sketch out some ideas for. Um, this uh, bitmap to CAD data sort of thing. So i uh, got to refresh my memory as to what exactly I was doing with this. It's been a while, right? So i got to figure that out. Um, so the things, the thing I know I have is given a line I can find the two endpoints. What I'm thinking about now is uh, how can I find some sub points in there for things that aren't, say, straight lines. I might want to have, um, I might want to have a certain like subdivision of straight segments to to get an approximation of a curve. Kind of thing. So I'm going to try to think through how I could achieve that. And the first thing that comes to mind is if I go here, I have to remember. Whew, excuse me. Okay, here. This, these, every other. If I run this, I just got to remember where I left things. Yeah, okay, so every other just drops a set of points. So what I can do, okay, I have an idea. My first thought is to just get the first half of the points sorted by X, and then take that the midpoint of that set of points to get like a quarter point and do the same with the other half does that make sense hmm Second, I'm getting gotta mute my phone. Do, 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 do. Okay. Let's get this brain moving. Dust off those weekend cobwebs. <laughs> uh, right, so um, I want to just kind of get a subset of the points that make up this line 
I use that subset to get a new midpoint and put that midpoint into the the idealized point set so I'm just thinking about effective ways to handle that that's all <coughs> So what I do think actually is that I can take um, I want to add to this I points thing here. I want to do concat or sorry conj actually conj onto the list of uh, idealized points, the midpoint, which is just MX, MY, uh, and re redraw this for a moment, and I should see some kind of midpoint. Okay, so that midpoint is not what I thought it would be. Although it's not too bad, but okay, let that, I think I could be fine with that. So, Hey, uh, De, uh, De, De Fornica. I sorry if I got your name wrong there. Dropped in once before. Great to see someone streaming closure on here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for popping in and uh, joining in on the chat. Uh, glad to be <laughs> streaming closure. Um, it's a fantastic language. I really like it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna apologize up front. Um, I had a long weekend, a uh, bit of travel, and I'm quite tired today, so might not be firing on all cylinders. So if I'm doing anything ridiculously silly, uh, apologies up front. But uh, glad to have you here chatting. That's cool. That is cool. Do you uh, do you use Closure um, a lot yourself? Uh, by the way. Um, I like to ask questions of the chat and stuff like that, but uh, don't feel obligated to have to answer back if you're not comfortable with that. That's totally cool. But, you know, it's fun to chat. Fun to chat. Um, what am I at? What am I doing? What am I doing today? Okay. Um, if I do... Um, let's see here. Mm, okay, I'm going to see how this works. We'll just kind of explore it and see what happens. Oh, something's... Okay, right, so this M2 is some new midpoint that I'm trying to make. All I'm gonna do is take, uh, take uh, divided by two, the count of uh, X points, take that from X points, and we do uh, this is such a hacky way to write all this, but oh well, f slash midpoint of all of those. Okay, so I'm taking exactly half of the points. It just should be, I'm kind of imagining it'll be the like, this half so the midpoint will end up kind of right here but we'll see if that's actually accurate I don't know <laughs> I'm just kind of spitballing today so uh, let's do this concat uh, mx2 my2 horrible naming convention but uh, I'm just hacking right now so I'm gonna be okay with that Work in bioinformatics and genomics. Closure isn't too popular in my field, but I also touch on a bit of web programming and data viz. 
I mostly tinker with closure in my spare time for now. Oh, hey, Mike, how's it going? I'm doing well today. Um, one second, uh, Defornica, that sounds uh, quite cool um, as, a, as a main job. Uh, I feel like closure isn't popular in too many fields in general. I, I guess in FinTech, it seems like it'll probably be popular there because Cognitech was bought out. But uh, tinkering with closure in your spare time is, uh, in my totally biased opinion, a great, <laughs> a great language to use. Uh, Mike, I'm um, uh, good to see you in the chat again. Uh, always happy to see you. I'm doing pretty well today. Um, I'm going to be up front. I uh, had a lot of travel this past weekend and uh, crazy flights, so I am exceptionally tired and <laughs> probably won't be streaming for too long uh, and probably won't be making wise decisions, so I'm just hacking away. <laughs> Still wanted to... Uh, Still wanted to force myself to do a little bit of streaming, you know, just to keep the uh, keep the wheels greased, as it were, you know. So, but uh, like, I'm I'm feeling totally fine. I'm just tired. That's all. But uh, glad to see people in the chat again, anyway. So, hope you're doing well. Hope everyone's fine with me being a little tired, because <laughs> that's just the way it's gonna be. That is not what I was expecting. Um, hmm, okay. I suppose it's because of... Okay, let's... Change up the order of this here. Let's do sort by first and see if that changes where the midpoint goes. Yeah, okay, that's more what I was expecting. That's fair. Flying can take a lot out of people. Yeah, it, it it's weird, right? Like you just so because of um, restrictions and everything like that. It, as far as I understand it, a lot of flights are being consolidated and moved around so long trips across the country you end up hopping to different airports instead of doing a direct flight sometimes so that was me and it's it's really funny because basically what you do for the day is sit and wait right like you're not you're not really doing much physically and you can sleep through a lot of it but you still end up exhausted <laughs> on the other side of, of the day for some reason but it's not a complaint it's just uh, it's just what happened <laughs> that's all and that is completely fine okay so that kind of worked there so I'm gonna just do the same thing but make this three and instead of sort by first this I actually need to reverse this and that should be okay so let's add this to this list here mx3 my3 see if that I'm I think that'll kind of put a midpoint about here but I'm not 100% on that so uh, no, it just did the same thing. Oh, of course, that's... If I'm sorting by, I have to reverse after the sort, not before the sort, because it just completely undoes everything. It's ridiculous. Reverse. Wait a second. No, am I doing this right? Yes. I think that makes sense. There we go. Okay, that's a good start. Yeah, so my weekend was great and then a lot of flying. How was everyone else's weekend? Hopefully, uh, hopefully things were okay. Not too crazy, just a bit of fun. 
Okay. So I have that strategy. Is it a good one though? That's that's the thing on my mind here. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this. So uh, what I'm ultimately trying to do is come up with a way where I can get reasonable points along some kind of sketched curve so that I can kind of just take that as a new polyline and then run like curve smoothing algorithms on those sets or something uh, instead of instead of keeping the points for this crazy polygon here. Housework weekend for you, raking up leaves, cleaning windows, helping a friend move, stuff like that. Oh man. You know, uh, so I, uh, uh, was it last weekend or the weekend before, I also helped a friend move and yeah, do, do chores and stuff like that. And they're, they're busy weekends and it's, it's not always fun work, but I personally always find it extremely satisfying to just have a, have a weekend set aside doing, doing chores, doing work and getting it all done. I like that. Hey, uh, v uh, Vakali, welcome back. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Uh, but yeah, Mike, so that, that actually sounds like kind of a nice weekend, you know, managing to get a few things done. That's cool. That is cool. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm thinking about how to make, I'm thinking about how to generalize this approach a little bit. And what I think I'm going to do, basically, to... Idealize endpoints is one function, but then I want to make some sort of function that does um, simplify uh, I don't know what to call this uh, Vakali, how are uh, how are you doing? Hope you had a good weekend. I was uh, telling other people in the chat here that uh, I'm, uh, I'm a little tired today. I had flying and travel, so <laughs> bear with me if I'm, being, if, I'm, if I'm missing obvious things or, or missing the chat or I'm talking slow and all that stuff. It's just uh, not firing on all cylinders today. But uh, I hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good weekend. Okay, simplify. Um, I don't know how to refer to this polygon. So this green thing is actually a polygon, not a uh, not a single line, right? It just we call it a line because it looks like a drawn line. Um, <laughs> if it, so if I ever, if I ask you questions and you don't feel like answering, that is totally fine. Don't feel obligated to respond if you don't want to. No pressure. It's all good. Okay, so, uh, what do I call it? Simplify sketch, um... Yeah, sure. I'll leave it like that. Simplify. I'll just, you know what? Let me just do simplify. Just leave it at that. Let's not make a big deal out of it. Okay, so the basic idea here, um, simplify a polygon that is a um, sketched curve or line from I had for example um, basically to do this by uh, oops so the idea I have in my head is to sort by or first uh, get idealized endpoints geez uh, sort all 
points by distance from uh, P1 endpoint, then um, split this um, sort into um, n and um, what do I call it n groups yeah for each group find midpoint um, simplified curve is the uh, the list from P1 to P2 with midpoints sorted by distance. Okay, so that's the idea. So simplify will take points and n and then do all of those things. So that I think could work. We'll try it. Ovakali, you were uh, studying this weekend? Okay. You know, I would I remember when I was in university, there were some weekends where I spent the pretty much the whole day, Saturday and Sunday, just studying. And while I was sitting there studying, I was not happy per se. I wasn't sad. I was kind of neutral and focused, but at the end of those weekends, I always felt like it was a completely worthwhile thing to do. I always felt really accomplished. So hopefully, hopefully you manage to have a good time studying. It's not always easy. Okay, so let's see here. All right, all right, let's just get this going. I'm doing nothing. I'm just putting spaces and deleting things and <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I need is, let's just pop this let statement up here and get the, uh, what am I looking at here? Get the idealized endpoints, which works like this, right? So let's actually do, let's just copy this. reviewing scientific articles from Cusco, Peru. Apologies if I mispronounced that name there. Science Direct. That sounds cool. I'm sure that's a lot of work, but that sounds neat. Oop. That sounds really neat. So scientific articles in like uh, computer science uh, articles or, or in a different field? Okay, let's see here. And from Peru, I've never been to Peru. I hope it's nice over there. As in like the weather's doing okay and all that kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> be cool to visit, but uh, these are not great times for that sort of thing. Um, Right. A and B are the A is the first endpoint, B is the second endpoint. This should work. Idealize endpoints. Uh, wait a second here. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, that should be fine. Okay. So that. <clears throat> Cusco, Machu Picchu. Okay. Huh. Machu Picchu. Nice. Very nice. And it's cool. Uh, streaming, uh, you know, I, I quote unquote meet and chat with people. It, it's just, it's text, right? So it's not, it's not really meeting people, but it's interacting with people. Uh, from all over the place. I, I, that's really quite fun. It's neat just to see and hear about where different people are watching from. So that's, that's really cool. <laughs> okay. 
A and B is that now the reason I did this I don't remember I shouldn't really need to do this I don't think but Perhaps I do, I can't remember. Um, mm. Gonna say no to that for a, a moment. Right, let's just keep going with this. So A and B are those endpoints. Oh, I don't, I still need to do this. Then Next, the articles you're studying are how to predict academic performance using machine learning algorithms. Oh man. Wow, that's something else. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I guess, wow, I'm not even gonna pretend I know the first step in, in achieving something like that. It's pretty cool stuff though. Pretty cool stuff. It's a little, um, how do I say it? Machine learning, I think, is a fascinating and powerful set of tools that we can use. It's a little disconcerting every once in a while hearing about the kinds of applications people are jumping to with it. Like predicting academic performance and ML, they're neutral things in general, but you could kind of come up with ways in which that could be used poorly and ways in which it can be used really well. And it's just, the, it's, it's always the poor, the, like using a thing poorly that pops into my head first. So I always feel a little scared. And then I realize, well, wait, it, it's, not, it's not a guaranteed bad. And as a element of study, that's really quite fascinating. Okay, I'll get somewhere one day. <laughs> uh, right, so this... Okay, so I actually don't need to, let's just ignore the drop Z thing here. Let's just keep it a little more straightforward for now. So we just keep them in 3D. Then I can sort points by um, transformed points is Are they, so I, sorry, I'm just, I saw the, uh, the emojis you put on there. Is that, is that me in a laptop? <laughs> me with a mustache and a laptop? <laughs> I'm into it. I love it. Okay, so here, all I'm trying to do is sort the points by the distance to A. Okay, that's it. Extremely easy, at least in theory. Sort by distance uh, distance takes a and b yeah you know what let's do it like this partial f slash distance a 
Okay, so that's the function to sort with, uh, the list of points. Then, um, segment. <laughs> yep, that's me. <laughs> that's cool. <Th> <laughs> I like it. It's like a tiny little mascot. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Uh, segments then are partition. Oop. Um, I wonder if there's a way. Actually, I have to do it this way. I have to do partition all. And the partition size is actually uh, count points divided by n, so that I get the number of segments instead of yeah no that I think that's right. Okay, we'll do that. So then, oop, that's each segment. Then all I need to do is. Um, uh, M points here is just map B F slash midpoint over segments. Okay, that's the midpoints. Then I believe all I really need is to return into a vector. Uh, oh man, I'm just, every every time I look down at the chat, I see the little uh, mustache man and the computer, and it makes me chuckle. <laughs> That's so good. Hilarious. Uh, yeah, so into vector concat uh, a m points b Okay, let's see if this even, it, let's see how much sense this actually makes. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I wanna try it, obviously. Simplify is probably a bad name for this function, um, but I can't come up with a better one right now, so I'm gonna be okay with that. Um, so all I really need to do, uh, first what I wanna do is actually get, where am I at here? The function sketch returns a list of points, right? Yes, it does. Okay. So here, if I do simplify sketch uh, with, let's do a segment uh, one, two, three, four. Let's do six. Ooh, something wrong with that. Okay. Not a problem. I just have to figure out where I went wrong here. Okay, partition all. Um, oh, here. I didn't partition all. I didn't pass it the collection, of course. I just gave it a number, so it's a not a it's not a, a, a set a book. It's not a sequence, right? So partition all by that number, the points. There we go. That should work now. No, now there's a different problem, which is totally fine. I wonder if I have to do this. Apply f slash midpoint to the things from the segments. Let's see here. Oh, come on. Let's get that spam out of here. No good.
<laughs> Another bot enters the fray. Yeah, sorry about that. It's a pain. Uh, I think. I think that's deleted. I think we should be okay. Yeah, another bot enters the fray. It's no fun. At some point in the future, I'm gonna have a solution for those things, but I'm not quite big enough for it to be like a, a real big problem yet. But uh, I can't spend an entire stream just sitting here banning people. So at some point, it might be something uh, really critical. But for now, you know what? One one little bot here and there, I can manage it. Uh, let's try this again. Oh, I think I built it twice. There we go. Those are those are some numbers. Hmm. Classic problem where some of those aren't float values, which I just need them to be float for better rendering to the through SVG and stuff like that. So where did those end up coming from? I always forget. If I do, I could do this. I could be real cheesy here and do not be float on this. That should guarantee that they're all, no way. Eh? Hmm, what did I do wrong now? Oh, yeah. Mm. That is not gonna work. Uh, because points are not floats, they're vectors already. Um, ugh. One day very soon I'm going to clean up my library to be consistent with the types of, of numbers going in and out, because this this does get ridiculous. It makes all my functions less readable and more tedious to use. It's just, it's bad design, so I have to fix that soon. Okay, um, I'm just gonna pretend it's fine for a moment. And, <laughs> and uh, Let's have a look here. Let's, okay, let, what I'd like to do now is see if this makes any sense whatsoever. Um, okay, so here, oh, I uh, didn't rebuild this. This is not correct, right? I only have, if I count that, that's three points, I think, yeah. So it's the two endpoints and only a single middle point, which doesn't make sense because, or, shouldn't make sense. What am I missing here? Uh, gotta see if the segments make any sense. I might, I think I'm doing something wrong still. Okay. So I segmented it only into one. And why would that be the case? What is this number? Oh. Wait, am I, am I, wait, why is the count of point, oh, here we are. Okay, this points, I have to, I have to do this for this to work, apply. This is hacky like crazy, but that's okay. Apply concat to points, that'll, smoosh all the points into a single list, which is what I need. Oop. 
Oh, jeez. Okay, there we go with that. Okay, now this should... Oh. <laughs> Not quite. Okay, let's see. Points. Okay, so sketch returns a list of list of points. So if I do apply concat to that, okay, it does turn into a single thing there. Then uh, this is a cheesy way to do it. Right, so A and B, I want to work just with the normal points as no, as it was. That should be okay. Here, apply concat points to get the X points. Although it shouldn't make a difference. Uh, probably does. Then here, I can just do this right away. And that should be, that should maybe work. It might work. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's give that a shot. Now here, I don't need this anymore. I can just do midpoint directly. One sixth is still wrong. Missing something here. I'll have to I'll have to step through this more carefully in a moment. Okay, those are the yeah, and then here apply concat points again. Okay, this is ridiculous. Um, apply concat to points. Okay, flat points is that. This, we could just use the original points, that's no problem. Here, x points should be able to work as flat points. Sort by partial distance to A, the flat points list. Then segments does have to be partitional by some number, which should just be count of flat points divided by N. That's the number, oops. Oop, that's a mistake. Oh well. Partition that, but then I have to partition the X points list into segments, and then the midpoints should be map midpoint over the segments. Please work for me now. Something has gone wrong. Okay. Did I just miss something simple? Okay, there we go. We've got something. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
that makes sense. Does it make sense? Six segments should have, I thought it would have seven points, but let's go with that. What I can do, um, float point. Ooh, that's a horrible name. Forced to float. Vec float, sure. V float. Horrible. Uh, let me make a note to myself here. <laughs> um, to do. Make uh, it so that I don't have to use add, add z, drop z, and float all over the place. This should be done in the forge library. Um, and functions requiring certain, uh, certain um, types, I guess, should uh, handle those checks and coercions themselves. Example, um, passing 2D point to the F slash midpoint function already works, but should also be able to pass it, pass them into every function, um, which shows up forget there are there's a bunch of functions where if you pass it a 2d point it fails so I just I want to have that all sorted out that's all big important note that I keep ignoring <laughs> whoops okay so the vector here is just gonna be map V float over V right so with that I should be able to do if I do V float of this, 1 over 6, 7 over 8, right, that should, perfect. So now I can do, um, where am I at here? This here, I can actually just do uh, map v, v float there, and this should be up here. Okay, that should, let's try simplify one more time. Okay, those all look okay. So now what I can try to do is generate <clears throat> where am I at here? Let's try this. All I need to do is uh, map v drop z. Wait, do I? Yeah. Over simplify points by eight or section of six sections, I should say. Instead, that's maybe nicer. Uh, that's ASDF, and let's just draw those and see what it looks like on this thing. All right, let's have a look. Okay. Classic naming convention, ASDF. <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty good. Okay, there's one problem I see, of course, which is the endpoint. So the spacing here is not not exactly correct, right? But that looks pretty good otherwise. I'm pretty impressed with that as a starting point. 
Oh man, that's pretty cool. Okay, so. I'm going to I'm going to try this same function just without the sorting at all. So here uh what am I looking at? Oh, actually before I do that, uh let's try let's bump that number way up and bring that number way down just to see how it looks kind of at more extreme ends. Where am I at here? Okay. Uh Let's um, do 24 segments here, Let's see what happens. I mean, I gotta say that's looking pretty good. Uh, that's pretty exciting actually that it's, I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, and now, okay, oh, one more thing. Like I said, I have to, it, so if I make it by two segments, I think it should just be three points, the endpoints and, oh no, of course, that's ridiculous of me. Uh, wait, it's not ridiculous of me. It, <laughs> let's pump the brakes for a second. This, N segments should be the it should have the start point a midpoint of the whole thing and then the end point so this n is not segments it is the number of inner points not a bad thing but uh, I might have to rename that or decide if that's a smart way to do it I don't know, it, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it might matter. Okay, so we'll just use 20 as a nice, man, that's pretty great. Okay, so let's see what it looks like if I don't bother to sort the points at all, uh, which means here, let's just comment that out and just make X points equal flat points because I am a little bit lazy and uh, let's just have a look. Let's see. So the reason I wanna see if it, okay, it makes a big difference. Okay. So, That makes sense too. Uh, so what's happening here, since the sort of the points that make up the actual polygon of the green line, the sort of that is all of the points on the left side first, then it turns itself around and then it's all of the points on the right side of it, right? So as I split that list, uh, it will um, correctly take the midpoint of the points that it takes here and all that. It's just that the points it is taking to calculate the midpoint are not truly representative of the, uh, of the correct segmentation. So I'm not sure if that made any sense, but it's, it's gonna be wrong. Okay, so that, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna, where'd it go now? And I'm getting lost in my, uh, in my experiments here. That's okay though. Okay, so you need to sort the points by their, by their distance to a point for this to work the way I need it to. So there's a good and a bad thing about that. The good thing is, it makes sense and it looks really, really nice along a curve like this. But the bad thing is, I don't think it'll work for more uh, complicated uh, sketches. So I'm gonna get my iPad and uh, come up with a new 
test to see uh, to see how it works. I also am gonna get myself some coffee, so I will be right back. I won't be too long. Uh, just getting set up. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's make a new shape to mess around with here. Just going to send it to the computer and rerun the thing. You know, the thing. <laughs> that extremely descriptive explanation. <laughs> There's no. Hmm. That's a problem. Okay, I think it worked. Let's find out. Hey, it did, and wow, okay, so It actually kind of worked better than I thought. So, let's see. Okay, so actually I'm, I'm a little shocked that that works as well as it does. The only, uh, so there's two, there's two things wrong. Well, maybe a few. For sure, uh, the endpoints are not correct. This one looks correct just by by nature of one of them probably being right, but I think this here is another one that's not totally accurate. So the, the problem with that is um, if I don't get the endpoints sorted out for non-line shapes, I won't get, uh, like I'll lose the shape itself a little bit, right? Like I need the endpoint here to at least be accurate to the bounding box. I also need a way to discern corners, but as a start, this approach works reasonably well. I'm gonna pass it a more complex shape in a minute, but I, let me, oh, that's not what I need. Uh, that's not what I not, we need to do. I need to do this here. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, see this, right, uh, just doesn't work. So the line fit 
is unf- like I. Blah, blah, blah. How do I want to say this? I don't want the um, line fit to be dependent on the number of segments that you use to estimate it. But now that I say it out loud, I could maybe just have it as like a pre-process step. You fit it with a lot of points, and then you have then all you have to do is run simplification algorithms on that subset. So maybe it's actually not a problem at all. Does any of that make sense? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm gonna try. Let's do 10 and just see how that looks. Right, so this is the end point, obviously wrong. Uh, this one's fine. This is the midpoint of all of the bounding box, essentially, which is not at all correct to what you would, like if we had to put points on this as humans, we would do one here, one here, and one here, right? So even with 10, it gets a lot closer. Let's do uh, 30. Let's let's keep 30 as our, I think I had 20 before, but 30 is fine. No, 30 is too much. But see, so it's, you gotta go pretty high with the segmentation and there's some jitteriness around this point here. So it's not completely perfect, but Okay, let's do 24. Seems like a good spot to test it at. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Let's try a... Uh, let's try some other shapes for a minute. Let's try that. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't work at all. Okay, so um, curves iffy. Let's start with, well, actually, let me do this and try that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so It's not um, it, it's not quite reliable enough. I need to come up with different methods for sort of different. Well, I don't know. I, this is this is gonna be hard. I guess is okay. So let's try that. I don't expect this one to work properly at all. It wouldn't be any fun if it was easy though. Yeah, <laughs> no, you. I'm not complaining uh, at all. I was actually extremely surprised that this worked as well as it did the, with some of the more complex shapes. There you go, that's an example of how it will just very clearly not work correctly. So. Uh, I think the next best thing to start working on is 
trying to handle situations where there's a corner. So let's, I'm gonna draw that. That's a horrible drawing. That's not great. Suddenly I'm all picky about the corners that I'm drawing. <laughs> okay, let's, let's use this as a kind of good reference point. We'll start with this. Yeah, eh, I, sh I didn't go into this expecting it to be easy, of course. Okay, so this isn't bad, but this isn't good. <laughs> um, the only reason I'm getting accurate endpoints is just by a fluke. It's not good enough. The reason that things can start to deviate from the, the line around corners and stuff is because the segment itself might have points on the vertical part of the line and on the horizontal. So you can imagine if you have a big enough segment, the midpoint ends up out in the open, not along the green segment at all, because the midpoint of of a corner is going to be the same as the midpoint of a triangle, right? Uh, pretty much anyway. So that's why that happens. Or at least that's why I think that happens. So it seems like a reasonable thing to want to try and do next is come up with some sort of approach for finding a corner. And uh, <laughs> I kind of don't know how to do that. Um, what's a good idea? So the first thought that comes to my head is to take um, say the very f so take the very first couple of points on one end and the couple of points on another and project a line from those points out this way and from those points out infinite like infinite lines and then just calculate an intersection point and then use that as a sort point for distance and the points within a certain radius of that mid that point are considered exactly the corner and then you take the midpoint of that cluster and then you'd have a midpoint. Now there's a bunch of problems with that. Uh, the first is the corner might be way closer to one side than another. Oh, could you check for a number of points in a cluster? Maybe identify that as a corner. So if there are 10 points all close by, it might indicate an important feature. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea at all, although... Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. How do I want to... Yeah, so your, your cluster idea is a, is a good one. I'm trying to think how I would build that nice and easily and if it actually makes sense because um, remember that this green line is not a line it's a polygon right so there's 
a whole bunch of nodes on the bottom, a whole bunch of nodes on the top. I'm just thinking, I don't know if there are, on average, if there are actually more points at a corner than at a straight section. Wouldn't there have to be? Maybe. I'm talking to myself like I know what I'm doing and I just, I don't. Um, Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Didn't consider the fact that a bend may also have a lot of points. Man, this is a puzzle. <laughs> I I like it. I'm going to I'm going to have to stew on this one for sure. I, like there's there's got to be there's got to be some clever way to do it. Uh, let's see here. Um, whoops. What did I just do? Did I do anything? Okay. Um, let's hit the internet and see what they have to say. <laughs> so I'm effectively kind of... I don't know if this is... If I'm going to be able to get through this. Okay. So... The word I'm the key word I'm thinking with here is point cloud. The way I'm representing polygons is actually just a list of points. And a here I'm not sure if people are familiar with what a point cloud actually is, but a point cloud is just a list of points. Uh, it's used with like large-scale 3D scans and stuff like that. So here's maybe not, these don't all have great examples, but it's basically, yeah, so the Kinect, the Microsoft Kinect camera uh, uses a LiDAR, I think, like a light, like it projects a grid of infrared laser points onto the subject and then it can detect the distance from the lens to where the point hits and it can it then collects a list of points and a 3d distance and creates a point cloud now a point cloud has technically since you're just storing a list of coordinates it doesn't have relationship data you have to kind of algorithmically compute different sorts of things after the fact so that's why i'm searching because effectively if i simplify things down to sets of points the idea is i could come up with heuristics and algorithms to run and, and kind of highlight different segments uh, as important it's similar in nature to doing uh OpenCV like image image processing and stuff like that because those you process on data in in sets of pixels and stuff like that uh, it, I, I guess it's similar in the sense that you're kind of using local properties to to cr recreate and build global structure in the case of something like an edge detection algorithm with pixels but in the case of this point cloud stuff it's it's different again, right? You're 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 trying to find information based on things like clusters, uh, geometric relations, and all that. So, point cloud stuff is a little above my head at this point, but I'm effectively doing it, so I should maybe use it as uh, inspiration, to say the least. Right? Like you can imagine algorithms existing that would take this point cloud set and be able to uh, tessellate a surface over it, right? But it's it's not it's not obvious up front how to do that. You probably need stuff like uh, minim like like uh, solvers that minimize angle, aspect ratio, and length of connecting edges or something like that. And you there's probably 
more than one optimal solution, so it can take a long time to compute. I'm just spitballing here. I don't know exactly how true any of this is. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Getting a little specific here. Edge and corner detection for unorganized 3D point clouds. Maybe that's something. Okay. So the blue here are detected corners, green detected edges. That makes reasonable sense there. Uh, I'm absolutely not going to parse and understand this whole thing on stream, so <laughs> might be a bit of a non-starter for today. Anytime I open a paper, um, instead of reading it right away, I just scroll and look for all the pretty pictures to see if <laughs> to see if there's anything visual about it that I could understand quickly. It it's kind of a juvenile way to read a paper, <laughs> but uh, the shininess distracts me. You know, like ooh, that's cool. Ooh, there's there's coordinates and and, and axes and stuff. actually probably get a machine learning cluster pretty easily that would do this already trained up and such oh man that would be pretty cool that would be actually a foray into new territory for me I uh, basically know of machine learning I don't know machine learning if you know what I mean um, but actually that is a good a good point although I kind of I kind of do want to try come up with other implementations. I don't want to I don't necessarily want to fall into the trap of, "Ooh, there's something complex here. Uh, let's see if we can throw an ML solution at it." Not that I'm opposed to ML, just that I do I want to cultivate like true understanding of what I'm building here. So that that's a hesitation. It's not a it, it's it's not an excuse. In fact, it might be a lot of fun to um, to try. Um, brings up the idea that there may be ML. Uh, there might be ML models already trained up for. Uh, different feature recognition um, tasks perhaps I could uh, find some for corner detection more complex what if I could get uh, analysis uh, 
more complex. That doesn't even make sense. There we go. Like the idea of trying to tackle the problem, at least at a mathematical equation level. It was more of a last ditch effort if you get annoyed enough with trying to solve it myself. That's fair enough. So I like it now that you bring it up, I, I wanna I am not gonna go to ML right away. But it actually is really fascinating. Like it kinda be I feel like I probably should learn a little bit of ML related stuff how to set it up, how to use existing models, that sort of thing, just as a good uh, sort of tool in my tool belt. So maybe some implementation of ML would be good as like a practice sort of thing, but I don't want to, I don't want to jump to that first. And I, I feel pretty confident that there's some reasonable solutions without going the ML route anyway. And as much as possible, I really want to have my code portable between Clojure and Clojure Script. Uh, not because Clojure Script is like the pinnacle of efficiency, but because it is the pinnacle of being able to run on pretty much everything. Uh, whether or not you love JavaScript, it is pretty much everywhere. So um, using Clojure Script just it has some appeal to me in terms of. Uh, library portability and if I get into all the ML stuff I I don't know how easy to move that kind of stuff around becomes but those are tangential issues so <clears throat> but you're totally right tackling the problem on a math equation kind of level is uh, is where I'm trying to go with it or uh, math slash algorithm kind of level I don't even need them to be the most efficient approach, at least not at upfront. Just thinking through it on my own is, is an important thing. So along those lines, one, one I, like sliver of an idea is to kind of uh, take a shape in and use its aspect ratio somehow. Um, to detect, I don't know, I don't know what to detect. <laughs> so like, the thought is you could say, oh, the, the given shape is close to a line if upon a 180 degree rotation, the aspect ratio uh, follows some kind of sign distribution, right? If it's a line, it'll have, uh, when it's horizontal and vertical, a really, really uh, large aspect ratio. It'll be really slender and really long. And then when you go on a 45 degree angle, the aspect ratio of the axis aligned bounding box will be close to a square. And in fact, it will be exactly square at some point along the rotation. Um, whereas if you give it a more complex shape or a corner, uh, the aspect ratio will not, it will like the amplitude of aspect ratio change will be lower. And I just realized there is a problem with that. And the problem with that is if, uh, if you have a corner, but the second leg of a corner is much, much shorter, uh, you could mistakenly identify a corner as just a line. So that's not, that, I don't know that that's necessarily a smart thing to do. It's also true that um, for things that are corners, but not a 90, say a wider angle corner, you don't have, you don't have as, it, it's the, the wider the angle, the more it starts to act, act like a line anyway. So that's not exactly a good idea, I don't think. Um, yeah, I, I think it's gotta be some kind of uh, clustering approach or some kind of, um, projecting rays approach. 
Um, I also could do if uh, if you okay crazy idea maybe if I for some corner thing if I take the midpoint of a middle segment and then I take a midpoint of a middle segment of a smaller segment size is there a way to take middle? Okay, I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna write down a little weird sort of idea I've got here. Okay, so here. Uh, oh wait, um, I don't want that here. Let's put a little marker here. Uh, Realize endpoints. Then here I've got yep. Simplify dash line. Yeah, that's fine ish, I guess. Naming things is so hard. Okay, and here I'm going to do um, bisector. Okay, estimate bisector uh, to try and find corners. I could do um, line intersections. The idea here is um, take middle segments midpoint uh, for a few steps. Uh, by that I mean um, first middle segment is um, the whole corner shape. Second is uh, as the legs of the corner cut shorter, etc. What this should do is narrow narrow the points closer and closer and closer, if that makes any sense. So. Draw um, hmm. Do the same for the other leg. Compute the various uh, intersections. Guess the corner point as the midpoint of uh, the above intersections. Okay, not sure if that makes any sense. Uh, I'll see. 
see what I can do here. Um, my head's starting to pound a little bit, so maybe I can't do it all, but uh, defin bisector proto. So Okay, so to do this, I'm just going to take in a list of points. I'm going to I'm going to do this quick and dirty for now. Um, Okay, so <clears throat> uh, what's a what's a good thing to do here? Um, Okay, simplifications. Map v, the function um, simplify sketch line. Oh, this is a bad name too. Uh, let's just call it simplify sk sketch, and we'll just hope that I remember that for now. Uh, okay, so we'll simplify the sketch with uh, actually. Yeah, no, we'll do it like this. Partial simplify sketch with the points there. Uh, and I'm going to map that over the range. Uh, let's do 10. But I have to do ink, well, or I could do this. Range 1 to 10. How does that work again? Range 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. Okay, actually, let's just do 13. So I have 12, because why not? Uh, no reason not to, no reason to specifically, but I'm fine with that, doesn't matter. Okay, simplifications. Then, endpoints is, uh, I need to, map v, First of drop drop number collection, yeah. Drop divided by two count. Uh, the list you're looking at. Okay, so you drop that count from that list and you take the first of that. Uh, that is actually the M segments. Let's just call them segments. Those are the only segments of relevance for now. Um, I might want to do only odd numbers in the range, but I'll, I'll see how this works. Not sure if it'll work exactly the way I'm picturing, but it's the only thing I have in, in my head at the moment. So then that's segments, and then M points is going to just be uh, map V F slash midpoint. Yeah, midpoint, map that over the segments. And 
here I'll do that apply concat to points shadow that that's the endpoints and then here I'm just going to return map B uh, drop Z endpoints okay let's see how this works Wait a second. Um, let's actually make sure this is the same here. I don't need to drop Z here. I just need to B float that just in case. Uh, okay, so let's do bisector proto of sketch and let's see if it returns. Nope. Where did I go wrong? Should actually work, right? Actually, I don't think I shouldn't need to do this at all. Maybe let's see. Hmm. Okay, something's wrong here. So let's step this back a little bit. Let's also delete that because I actually don't think I need it. And let's print segments out and see what it looks like. Is this going to work? Okay, we got something. So here, I do actually have... Oh, wait a second. These are just single points. Okay, so I went wrong somewhere. Um, Okay, so simplifications. Oh. Oh. I should maybe be able to just do this directly. Endpoints, map V. Right. Um, I need to take, I do need segments, but I'm taking the wrong thing here. I need to take a list of three. Um, So I'll do that by doing this. Decrement the count and instead of first I just do take three. Okay, that's segments. Now this should work. Oh, excuse me. Let's see.
Okay. So that should be that should be 13 points, I think. Or 12, I mean. Yeah. Uh, it's 12 because I have a range here. So using those points, I'm going to try, uh, I'm going to convert ASDF here to, instead of simplify sketch, it'll be bisector proto. No dice there, okay. What? That doesn't make sense to me. Um, did I delete something? happened I have become very confused uh, okay I must have done something I must have hit some keys earlier and, and messed this up uh, let's try to get my brain back on track here. What's going on? Uh, let's ignore this for a second. Be lazy. What is going on? Uh, what have I done? <laughs> Okay, um, start hitting control Z, it'll go back to a fixed state at some point. Yeah, the problem is I'm wondering if that fixed state is way before. Um, I made this. That's all. I'm just trying to, I'm being lazy. I also saved it and I don't know. This is embarrassing. stuff apparently before I, I don't understand what happened well okay This, this must have all got... I have no idea what I did. I must have pressed a keystroke that like deleted something and then tried to put in new parens or something. I don't know. Divide by zero. Yeah, of course that would be a problem now. 
<laughs> I'm losing my mind. Oh, this is why. That shouldn't be zero, it should be a number. Okay. Well, uh, since I've got a bit of a mess on my hands, let's just go right ahead and do this. Bisector proto. It just, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. Okay, so now, ooh, I may have just uh, completely screwed myself up here. I'm gonna close it and hope that I didn't lose everything like a, like a chump. We'll find out. Okay, we're good, we're good. Ish. This should just be BB, I think it was, right? Is that gonna work? Almost. Ah, okay. Whew, we're basically where we need to be. Okay, good. All right, save that. <laughs> Back on track. Whew, dodged a bullet there. Okay, so this just plain old didn't work. Easiest recovery ever. <laughs> I'm sweating here. Woo! <laughs> um, is it is it Emacs that has um, oh what's that called the kill ring where you can kind of get like a branching undo redo history or is that um, Vim or maybe it's both? I've never I've never sat down and tried to understand it because uh, most of the time I haven't found the need for it, but. Mistakes like that make me wonder if I should. Okay. I think Emacs has something like that, but I'm in the same boat as you. Haven't had a need to really dive into it before. Yeah. I, it just, it also seems like, so, I, an undo redo uh, and copy and paste is like already if you if you're not paying attention you can like like copy and paste lets you copy something from the future go to the past paste that in and now you've got a new a, a whole brand new future, right? You can no longer access the old future because you're modifying things and all that. Since that's sufficient most of the time and already complex enough that you have to pay attention to, I kind of don't know how easy it actually is to use a complicated branching approach like that. Both Emacs and Vim have that, but Vim is persisted across restarts of the editor. That's pretty cool. You can also get the same in Emacs with plugins. Do you use that, uh, Lumi? The the um, undo tree. I'm in, I'm a little intimidated by it. It just seems like a bit of uh, mental overhead. Don't use Emacs at the moment, but you play around with it from time to time. Gotcha. I gotcha. Really liking the new GCC Emacs stuff? I've not heard of that. Oh wow, that's really cool. Well, 
that is uh, new territory for me. I am going to have to have a look at this. Huh. Wow. Well, that's very cool. Neat. Basically, the upcoming version that's a lot faster already works a lot faster, sometimes 10 times speed ups. Man, that is nothing to sneeze at. That's cool. So like, has that been a like a parallel development for a long time now? Because I've not heard of it. I, I don't I don't read up on that stuff all too frequently. So I, I, I don't know. But uh, I'm a big fan if it uh, if it makes things run nicely and quickly and all that. That's really cool. Basically a, a just in time compiler for Elisp, which currently runs interpreted bytecode. Gotcha. Or it currently is interpreted by code. Sorry, misread that. Huh. Man, that's cool. Very good to know. Very good to know. Okay, so why did this just utterly fail? That's the question that's on my mind. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. But I haven't thought of it yet. <laughs> uh, let's go with, instead of running map v onto the segments, let's run map v onto the simplifications to see what that looks like instead. Okay. Also improve speed up because you can ahead of time compile all the Emacs modules. Start up speed up, yeah. In any case, it's quite relevant. Single threaded nature of Emacs. Yeah, you immediately notice the speed up and responsiveness too. I am I am now very excited for this. <laughs> That's great to know. Oh man, man, I'm now I'm now I'm all excited to uh, give that a shot. That that is so great. It's in actually uh, fearing startup speed problems is one reason why I've kind of shied away from using a lot of plugins and modules to begin with. So maybe with this I can kind of experiment a little more with just a few more plugins and stuff like that. It sounds nice. Okay, so I am getting further away from what I intended to do. <laughs> but these are at least establishing... So it... If I... If I look at this and if I were to draw a line this way then I basically have the line perpendicular to what I would guess the bisector to be but that's not what I intended what I intended was to have a line, a, a line of points kind of going up like this so I, I goofed I goofed it up so instead I have to come up with something a little bit different but I think I can make it work. You basically, uh, it doesn't fix all the performance problems. Uh, garbage collection is still slow. UI stuff is slow, not concurrent, which is annoying around IO. Yep, that's definitely true. Basically you need to compile it from source including the GCC JIT compiler. You can also use Docker or Nix. Oh, I'm not scared of compiling it from source, but uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a few ways to install it. Yeah, so I, I messed, so I'm, I'm on a Mac computer, which I soon I think I want to build the 
build a Linux workstation or something like that. But um, I mess around with a, uh, a VPS with Debian on it sometimes, and and Mike, I have the similar experience that compiling things from source on Debian isn't actually uh, too bad at all. The, the worst thing about compiling from source is just sometimes being a little unclear on which libs you need to install and exactly what source you have to pull those from. But once you sort that out, uh, it's usually not too bad. Well, it could be fun. You've tested it in Windows subsystem for Linux and Ubuntu on a Mac and on Linux and it worked. Okay. Sounds like I'm not going to have any real problems if I uh, go ahead and get it set up. That's good to know. Oh yeah, my Debian stable. I have I've I have experienced that as well. Um yeah, you have yeah, where where you end up with some old stuff. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing's ever quite perfect, <laughs> but um, there's certain like uh, distributions like uh, what is it Arch Linux and and, and the community around that that kind of take. You need up to date stuff. and need to make sure you use the right compile options. Yeah, um, what a the Arch Linux community takes compiling from source kind of as the fundamental thing that you should be doing. And so, whereas Debian stable kind of inverts things a little bit, it's like you install things that are known to be stable and you can rest easy, quote unquote, right? Whereas Arch is, well, you can rest easy knowing that you have compiled the source yourself, kind of different perspectives on wanting to have control and stability but neither is necessarily better than the other but the approach that the community takes makes a big difference in how quick and easy and comfortable it is I think to do that um, so yeah Debian's really nice but it does have the potential problems with if you're unstable and blah 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 and Arch you have to have uh, confidence <laughs> which isn't bad uh, not bad at all. But anyway, it sounds like I will be able to get Emacs with the GCC Emacs installed somehow and give it a give it a spin. You're mostly unstable because it's a work computer. You need everything firing on all cylinders at all times. Yeah, you can't afford to lose half a day debugging a new library. Oh, it, that makes complete sense. I am not surprised to hear that at all. Not surprised at all. Um, what am I even doing today? What's going on? Oh yes, I have a new, a new idea has crossed my mind. And that idea is to take instead of this thing, um, first and last from the simplifications segments. Let's see how that works. I'm not convinced that it's going to, but I'm spinning my wheels right now. I've got to do something. Now, why are they all there? Oh, maybe I've made a mistake. Where am I looking here?
Hmm. Um, the way the way that this where is it up here the way I'm running simplify sketch the first and last points are always going to be the same so uh, this is meaningless every midpoint of the first and last points is um, Uh, the same point, so that's that's not helpful. Uh, let's just do second of reverse. Okay, let's give that a shot. There we go. That's that's more my speed here. Okay, so what I've just done is use. Uh, let's see here. So I simplified the this sketch to some sub, like with a bunch of points, and I ran it twelve times. The first time I ran it only segmenting once, then segmenting twice, segmenting three times, on and on and on, and then I took um, a line from one of those segmented points to the opposite segmented point and just did that a bunch and then calculated the midpoint of each of those to estimate uh, the approximate line that would bisect this. The idea is using that bisection I can project an infinite line and then do a similar thing to project an infinite line this way Similar thing for this. Calculate all the possible intersections there and take the average and assume that that's reasonably close to the corner. Uh, that's the idea. Um, the problem there is I could run like this still. I gotta go soon, so I can't get much further on this. But I this this doesn't automatically find corners. It expects like I need to know that it's a corner that I'm running this on. So that's not exactly what I want. But it's kind of it's not it's not without promise. But I'm gonna try a different corner before I go, just to see how this looks. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it's not gonna work. Not very reliably anyway. Uh, let me just do one more thing and then I'm going to get going for the day. Okay, here I am going to run simplify sketch with uh, 20 segments. Yeah, so it's all over the place. <laughs> uh, these don't line up even close, so that's not helpful. Okay, uh, I said I was going to go, but I'm going to try one more, one more configuration here. Just just to kind of see the boundaries of my solution at the moment. Let's do one like this. The other thought I have is it might make sense to find a way where I can, instead of finding corners, I can find long stretches of straight segments, break everything into disparate straight lines, convert those lines to quote unquote idealized lines, and then find intersection points of those to have more uh, 
control of corners and stuff like that. So that's another avenue I could maybe start to explore. But uh, before that, I have to kind of give this a good old think. Okay, so that is a little better in terms of this, but there's wrong, there's bad clustering here. Uh, let's run bisector proto, and then I'm going to get going. Things take a while to calculate, I guess. That's another problem, of course. Yeah, this is just not... I like the idea, but... Uh, well, so actually, this algorithm might be fine, but I'm relying on an also unreliable algorithm for segmentation. So uh, I can't, I shouldn't be testing this one until I've got the segment thing sorted out, right? So like if I were to do, if I were to do a line of best fit through these points and a line of best fit through some of those and through some of these, I would have a midpoint way up here and a midpoint way kind of close to here yeah I don't know I gotta think about that but um, that's gonna be all for the day I actually ended up working a little bit longer than I thought I was going to uh, but I need to uh, truthfully go <laughs> go and take a nap I'm getting really tired um, however I'm really excited that this aspect of my CAD library is uh, it, it's it's all prototyping and hacking of course but it's like this is actually I thought this was gonna be a way out there can't do anything like this until much much later but it's turning into quite a fun little avenue and I think it could be really fascinating to build some interactivity into um, making the sketches and then interfacing the sketches with your 3D extrusions and stuff like that. So this is not a tangent, this is a useful exploration of features. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to focus on uh, making sure I actually build and maintain the library, do some documentation and some spec and stuff like that. So I can't only have fun hacking away at things. I have to, <laughs> I have to do some of the uh, grown-up professional work too so I gotta just say that out loud so that I remember it for myself too otherwise I'll never get anywhere uh, however this was a great day I'm uh, quite pleased with myself um, that's really all I gotta say uh, thanks once again everyone for tuning in and joining in in the chat um, I sincerely love that it's it's really quite nice. Take it easy, man. Enjoy your nap. Yeah, I <laughs> promise you that. I certainly will. Um, yeah, so sincerely, thanks for joining in again. I'm always a little bit surprised, you know, that people keep tuning in and saying hi. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be surprised. People have been doing that for a bit. I'm just happy that it happens. That's enough chit chat for the day. Um, it is Tuesday and I did miss Monday, but I will kit keep to my normal approach and uh, I'll take Wednesday because I have a lot of work to do um, and I'll be back streaming on Thursday and Friday again and next week there will be as far as I know it should be just back to normal so that's the plan and that's what I'm gonna do have a good one everyone and I'll be back on Thursday <laughs>